Hello friends, this is Reza Rad from Radacad. In this video, I want to talk about how you can find out how much size each column consumes in a Power BI semantic model, find out the columns that consumes the most of the sizes, and do something about performance uh, improvement by reducing the size of your semantic model. Let's go and check it out. There are different ways that you can calculate how much size each column takes in a Power BI semantic model. One of them is using dynamic management views. You can connect from a tool such as SQL Server Management Studio to your Power BI semantic model as an analysis services engine, run your DMV queries code using MDX, using XMLA code, or using even um, DAX code and any of these will give you some information about your semantic model. There is also another way that you could use uh, third-party tools like Power BI Helper, which is a free tool that we have created. Connect to your semantic model gives you a list of columns and how much space each of them is using. Uh, you don't need to do anything. It's just, you don't need to write any codes. It's just connecting to the model and show it to you. I have a separate video about that. Uh, but in this video, I want to show you that even if you don't have a third-party tool installed, if you just have Power BI Desktop, you could use uh, DAX info functions to get this. Uh, so I'm switching into my screen and I'll look at this semantic model that as you can see, it has some number of tables in it. I want to find out how much space each of these takes. So I'll go to the DAX query view tab. And in this tab, this is a place that I can run some of the code uh, that I want to run in DAX. This has to be codes that return a table and not a particular measure value. So I can, for example, use these info functions. Uh, one of these info functions, for example, is info.tables. This gives me list of all tables. Now the info function that gives me list of value uh, values in a column, list of actually the size that takes the column uh, is info.storage table columns. If I run this, uh, info function, the result that I get, I'll zoom in a little bit on this side, the result that I get is like this. I have each table and each column and there is a column here called the dictionary size. Dictionary size column uh, has the size of these columns. As you can see, many of these columns is zero, but some of them has the size. This is in bytes. So if I want to get this um, in kilobytes, I can divide it by 1024. Uh, I can also sort this. I can say order this by dictionary size descending so that I get the columns that consume the most space at the top. In this case, you see, for example, the very first row in this case is, uh, let's find out what column it is. It is in fact internet sales and it is sales order number, which is high cardinality column, a column with a lot of unique values. Uh, if I want to get the size in, um, in let's say, kilobytes or even in uh, megabytes, I could do the, something like this. I could say add columns. So to this column, I'm going to add another column, let's say size uh, in kilobyte. And that would be whatever that dictionary size is, just divided by 1024. This is not, of course, the size of the column in the file format. It is when it is expanded in the memory. So now you can see this is the uh, kilobyte. Or if I want to have it in megabyte, I do this two times. And this should give me the size in megabyte, which as you can see in this model, everything is less than a megabyte. Now let's go and run this on a Power BI semantic model that the size is bigger. So I'll go to this uh, file. As you can see it here, the date performance file is 25 gigabyte size. Uh, I want to find out why it is like that. So I'll go to um, the Power BI semantic model for that, which is this one. I'll go to DAX query view and I'll open this. I'm going to write the same DAX code over here. So I'll come here and run the same thing. Now this should give me a list of columns. As you can see, this is not a complex semantic model. This has just one table. 
there is no such uh, large information. And this table has only three rows, which makes it really interesting case. Why 25 gigabyte memory for this? Now, when I come here and when I run this, I see that the columns that takes most space is the first column in here. It has quite a big size, actually, as you can see, 87 megabyte. This is the expanded size in the memory, of course, more than 25 gigabyte megabyte in the size of the disk but it gives you that kind of portion that this is the biggest column. Now, where this is coming from, when I look at this, this comes from the date table, a date table that I do not see. It's like a hidden date table. And this is when Power BI uses the default date dimension or a date table. That default date table, the way that it works, and I explained it in another video, is that for every date column in your semantic model, it goes and create a date table from the minimum date until the maximum date. As you can see, minimum is 1990, maximum uh, in this system, apparently when there is no maximum date or there is no date for, uh, for a record, it sets like a far end date. And because it has created that, it means that there is a date table with huge number of records in it. I can actually go and find out how many records that table has by uh, running something like a row count on that table, uh, or I can even do distinct uh, count. Now, uh, if you want to run distinct count here, you cannot just run distinct count by itself. It has to be in a context of a table. So I put these curly brackets that puts the value in the table. Then I say, give me distinct count. Now I need the table name, which in this case would be this. And because it has a special characters, I put it inside single quote, not double quotes. So I'll get rid of the double quote. And then the column name that comes after that. So let's say the date column in this, I want a distinct count of this. So let's see how many records I have. As you can see here, I have like over 2 million records in this date table. It's a huge date table. If I just, for example, get the year value of this, I want to see how many distinct count of the year I have. It shows that I have like 8,000 years in this, um, in this, which is quite a bit of uh, size in this. Now, I use this approach to get how many cardinalities of this I have, but I could also use another function instead. I could use evaluate uh, info dot column storage. This also gives me some sorts of cardinality, not for all the columns, but for some of the columns, it gives me that. And that is the, the value of that comes from the statistics row count or even the um, statistics states that gives me same thing. So if I use this and then merge it with the Mm, with the column ID with info.columns. From there, I'll get table ID. Then I know exactly which column, which table takes uh, more sizes or less sizes. Now let's go and fix this. In this case, I know that the reason for this is that it is using this default date table. So I'm going to remove that. Uh, and I'll do that by going to file options and settings options. I will just simply go and uh, turn off that O2 date time, which is for uh, which is for time intelligence. This is now when I turn it off, it would avoid creating of that extra column. So I'll click on OK, and by just doing this, we have uh, saved a lot of space because now we are not creating that date table. Now, if I go and run the same thing. You see this one returns error because that column does not exist anymore. When I run this, I see that I only have sales table and the biggest column in the sales table, the dictionary size of that is less than one megabyte. If I save that, just this file, um, I could show you what is the size difference now in this file, which you can see it is 39 kilobytes. So if I go and add a date table, um, it would not change that much size. In this case, I would not create a date table that goes all the way to uh, 9,999. It is a date table that goes just to the date er range that we have. And for the date value that I don't have, I'll just replace it with null values. 
So um, the main reason for this example was to show you how you could use InfoDAX functions such as info.storage table columns to achieve something like this without installing any extra applications, without installing any extra tools, you get this information right from DAX query view. I have another video about, uh, for example, how you can get list of all your measures with their DAX expressions, and then you can store it somewhere. Uh, very useful um, set of functions are these info functions. I hope this video helped you to use these functions, go and learn some use case practices for this. If you have any questions, feel free to put it down in the comments below. We create videos about Power BI and Microsoft Fabric weekly basis. Uh, so please subscribe if you like this video and until the next video, bye.